Hello out there. Um, thank you for uh, stopping on by. Uh, this is uh, Master Wizard Sticks here. And I really do appreciate you taking your own precious time and uh, unique uniqueness within of all that. And this today's topic. Oh yeah, please uh, help. Please help me support this channel by you creating uh you know your own way of spreading the word please subscribe and um, like the video perhaps um, and take it to the next dimension within a comment you know comments are extremely important as you well know then I have we grow a better rapport with each other and the audience as the YouTube uh, channel grows but anyways this today's topic is about the hi-hat you know and it also was known it really as we get more involved as I keep telling you some things that are and not really telling you expressing myself and giving you some more knowledge uh, per se you might you know take this to the next level and um, you know the sky's the limit here is infinite and this is not anything um, that is not of the truth, you know. And I have to express that deeply because I really do respect every individual listener. Unless there's just some crackpot out there that just wants to, you know, like on certain other platforms, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, they seem to get away with murder, privacy, you know, you name it, it's a... AI thing going on, you know, but that's a another dimension itself within, you know, your own awareness of your awareness to everything. But anyways, back to it, the hi-hat. Combination of two symbols and a foot pedal. All mounted on a metal stand. It is a part of a standard drum kit used by drummers in many styles of music. As I just re iterating some of this as you well know um, including uh, of course any type of music because you have to think about it for a second you know back in the day when you know Mozart, Bach, Beethoven, Bronze you know especially Chopin you know and you know in the orchestra itself to do the ballets and all the compositions orchestrated whether uh, of course there's separate little instrumentations of uh, you know by themselves a percussionist you know is very important job you know uh, everything every instrument so vitally important to create the the amazing vibrations, the resonance, the frequency levels to create the music, you know, like doing a dance, you know, basically, without the music, uh, as the music, uh, they always say that music can calm the wildest beasts, and that is, uh, to me, a very true statement, you know. You know, this webcam, I just bought it, and, you know, I'm figuring it out, but as... <laughs> They say one thing, and of course you learn all this through the School of Hard Knocks as I have many topics uh, involving that, but in either case, back to the hi-hat. So, as we are aware of, it is attached to, you know, basically um, a metal, you know, the pedal itself, you know. So, back in, again, m matching pair of small size symbols mounted on a stand with two you know of course two dose the bottom symbol and the top symbol the top symbol and the bottom symbol uh, there's many gauges of weights per each individual symbol because that is another dimension in itself um, you know you have thin which gives a really sharp fast sound and you have a medium. I use myself personally medium thin on the top. And all my symbols, I use Legend Series by Masterwork. Uh, 
and everyone has their preference to what kind of symbols they uh, are using, you know, to create these amazing, beautiful sounds. But uh, mine are all, are all hand hammered. I went to Turkey and uh, through all my years of traveling and things, I connected with some phenomenal, phenomenal artists, symbol masters, you know. They know what the hell and how to do it phenomenally. It's astronomical how with dimension they go in with metal. But the bottom symbol is fixed in, the top is mounted, right? As you and I are aware of. A rod which moves the top symbol towards the bottom. One when the pedal is depressed. A hi-hat that is in the open position or closed position. You know, as you are aware of the phenomenal sounds you can get. The hi-hat evolved. The hi-hat evolved basically in a term that now we're going to get into the actual uh, you know, why they call it the sock. From a sock symbol, a pair of similar symbols mounted at the ground at the ground level on a hinge spring loaded foot pedal right as you are aware of you know the apparatus is how they call it uh, in fact this knowledge that I'm reading it actually uh, here from Wikipedia you know you can, I'm gonna have a link in the bottom where you can just click it on and take you to the same thing the same page and da 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 you know uh, and take it to another level in your own time, you know. Now I'm just giving you a heads up. Uh, the apparatus. Drummers invented the first sock cymbals to enable one drummer to play multiple percussion instruments at the same time. Over time, these became mounted on a short stand, also known as the Low Boys. L-O-W hyphen B-O-Y-S and activated by foot pedals similar to those used in the 2010s when extended upwards roughly three feet 76 cubic meters they were originally known as high sock symbols which evolved over time to the familiar hi-hat as we all know the uh, symbols may be played by closing them together with the foot pedal, which creates a click sound. Now that's an interesting word how they put this. It's not really spelled click like like C H I C K. It's C H C K. So how you um, you know um, comprehend that or how you apply that is all individualized in your own unique style course of your artistry but uh, that's how they're saying it here you know but we have our own way and you know of course with that being said and done with them open close open and then close after striking to dampen the ring which now the ring being open creates a whole other ambience of color textures within all your symbols of which you are applying every microscopic part of you in your passion to, of expression and complementing all of everything of, of all the vibrations and frequencies of the melodicness of music you know itself because the drums and the cymbals are all each symbol is, a, is an individual instrument per se. Every one of them. Just like, you know, the bongos, the tablas, the kettle drums, the snare drum, you name it. All congas, every instrument, you know, and the percussion family, and it's, it's an infinite amount of sounds that are being created. Just beautiful music. You get people laughing, dancing, and everything else just by you keeping everything together, complimenting. But anyways, um, 
as I go back again, just uh, you know, as you well know, to ring or close, and then open to create shimmering effect, you know, an effervescence of <laughs> greatness effect at the end of a note, depending on how hard one one hits it, you know, or struck how it's being struck, you know attacked you know being loved is what I say uh, you know like loving a woman you're a woman or I mean, you might even love uh, you know many other things but you get the idea like your car your truck whatever everyone has their uh, understanding love in many ways so I say hey man you treat this with a lot of uh, very smooth you know nice flowing loving energy it's beautiful that way but a high act can produce a range of dynamics and that is a very true true very true statement from very quiet to a, to a very sharp you know, you have many types of sounds, and you know, uh, the pedal technique itself. You know, uh, with your left foot, you know, you you develop muscle memory and great endurance because you the the, the actual hi hat sock. It's the timekeeper. That's what it really job is in a group. You know. Um, you can always hear it through, I don't care, through hurricane storms and uh, rushing waves of, of tidal waves and everything else, the cosmos out there giving you all this lit feeling of light, you know. <laughs> but I tell you, man, it is so beautiful. The sounds that you um, can be created, soft, complement you know, during a, a ballad or a, the start of a gu guitar solo, uh, a very loud, striking, fully open hi-hats hard with uh, your technique used to create a loud, heavy metal music songs, you know, as heavy metal is a lot of that kind of, per se, uh, approach to the instrument itself. While the term hi-hat normally refers to the entire setup, two symbols, stand, foot pedal, rod, mechanism, in some cases drummers use it to refer exclusively to two symbols themselves. You know, history itself, initial versions of the hi-hat were called clangers which were small symbols mounted onto, uh, upon onto a actual bass drum rim and struck with an, an arm on the bass drum pedal. Then came shoes, which were two hinged boards with symbols on the ends that were clashed together. Next was the low sock low boy or low hi-hat pedal activated symbols employing an ankle high apparatus like a gato <laughs> similar to a modern hi-hat stand a standard size was 10 inches 25 centimeters some with heavy bells up to five inches. Well, that's in, that's interesting. Up to five inches. My well, God, thirteen centimeters uh, wide. Uh, hi hats that were raised and could be played by hand as well as foot. And of course, you can do all that. May have been developed around the 1926 era by. Barney Walburn 
of the drum accessory company Wahlberg and Og. That's pronounced uh, well. You can it's W A L B E R G and A U G. Um, either way, you you know you create your own way of saying it. You know what the heck can I say? Um, the first recognized master of new instruments was Papa Joe Jones, old time drummer. Whose playing of timekeeping ride cymbals while striking the hi hat as an open and close inspired the motivation of ride cymbal, another claim published in Jazz Profiles Blogspot on August 8, 2018, to the invention of the hi hat. Attributed to drummers William O'Neill Spencer, 1909-1945. Legendary jazz drummer Philly Joe Jones from at Joseph Rudolph Jones, 1923. Wow. 1923. 1985 was quoted describing his understanding about the hi-hat history. Jones said, I really dug O'Neill. He came to a club in Philadelphia where I was working in 1943. I, I, that time was great. I think it was and, and as we talked to me about the hi-hat, I used to and I was using a foot symbol, the low hat. O'Neill was one of them who invented the hi-hat. I believe that man he suggested I closed the hi-hat on two and four when playing four four time meter you know the idea and that's very true you know when you actually get into it but then you have asymmetric meters and uh, you can get way into all that uh, in between syncopated, you know, syncopations. Uh, but yeah, that's the flow of it to keep the time, you know, back to that, you know. He suggested I use and close the hi hat on two and four when playing four four. the The idea seemed so right. Hadn't heard anyone do that before. The editor of 2008 Jazz Profiles article made specific mention to others who were thought to invent the hi-hat including Joe Jones but also Kaiser Marshall not to take away from Papa Jones accomplishments in drumming styles and finesse and in techniques very polished a 2013 modern drummer article credits Papa Jones with being the first to use brushes on drums and shifting timekeeping from the bass drum to the hi-hats providing swing pulse focus well you know that's you know I don't know where and who you know there were so many phenomenal uh, very aware drummers and you know of course there's only really a handful phenomenal extraordinary so mind-blowing that yeah you you're left with the magic of the wizardry of their own way of presenting their expressions you know until the 1960s standard hi-hats were 14 inches 36 cubic meters cm with 13 inches and you know the, the list goes on and on available as less common alternative in professional symbol ranges in similar sizes down to 12 inches 30 cm restricted to children's kits in the early 1970s hard rock drummers including Led Zeppelin John Bonham 
began to use 15 inch 38 cm hi hats such as pasty giant beat in the late 1980s Zildjian released its revolutionary 12 inch 38 cm special recording hats hi hats which were small heavy in hi-hat symbols ex intended to close miking either live or recording and in those days though we were recording uh you know analog version which is totally you know we're on we got in this digitized cell phones and computers and all this digitized world and you know it's all good but <clears throat> You know, the analog version, uh, you can do a lot in, with all that too, you know, the old amazing analog. But back to that, those mini uh, symbols, uh, you know, easily mid-90s, Pacey, you know, came up with this other idea, offered 8-inch 20CM mini hi-hats as part of its Vision series which were among the world's smallest hi-hats starting in the 1980s you know a number of manufacturers also manufacturers also experimented with rivets yeah I know and believe me I have symbols like that they create an, in a new very unique kind of sound in lower in the lower symbol you know but by the end of the 1990s the standard size was once again 14 inches 36 cm with 13 inches 33 cm a less common alternative alternative or whatever how you want to say it and similar hats mainly used for special sounds you know and you know that's a uh, be real you can do amazing things with it modern high hats are much heavier than you know, than modern crash symbols, reflecting the trend to lighter and thinner crash symbols as well as heavy hi hats. Another evolution is that the pair of hi hat symbols may not be identical with the bottom, often uh, heavier than the actual top, you know. And possibly uh, Bennett some examples, you know, from Sabian Fusion series. You know, I have some Sabians, and you know they're pretty damn hot, red, rojo caliente hot. And the uh, Celebrator Zildjian Master Sound and Zildjian Quick Beats Sound Edge and Miel Sound Wave. Some drummers even use completely mismatched hi hats, you know, from different cymbal ranges, Zildjian, K's, Z's, hi hats, you know, jazz. So there's so many types of levels of where you can take this. Uh, just giving you some ideas here. Different manufacturers and even different sizes similar to the K series, you know, hats where uh, and where the top hat is one sixteenth of an inch 1.6 mm smaller than the bottom Max Roach another amazing drummer who I uh, followed around in my younger years uh, gaining knowledge you know was particularly known for using a 15 inch 38 cm top with a 14 inch 36 cm bottom other recent developments include the X hat, fixed close or half open hi hats, and K cable controlled or remote hi hats. And, that, and you those came in handy a lot because uh, you you could do a lot of different variations of setting it up. You know, to to actually you could have two of them, one with your left and one on your right because um, I have a lot of pedals myself and I have used that myself personally and it does come in handy uh, 
with certain arranged setups on stage, you know, when you're live. Depending, you know, there's so many things that are going on. You, you know, you get used to this one thing. And then, while that, you know, um, was being done, you know, uh, middle symbol remains stationary. Drop clutches. You know, that's another one that I have. And I have, you know, an amazing um, pedal for just doing this, you know. Um, it basically... It will lock and release hi-hats while both feet are in use playing double bass. Which, you know, there's a lot of cats out there that are playing double bass. Uh, I play single bass, but I use Duralist triple pedals. <laughs> yeah, a guy, yeah. That's a whole other story about uh, my, um, my pedal, my bass drum pedals and that of which are connected to you know, for interdependence and creating uh, asymmetric uh, compounded um, rhythms, you know, with all the degrees of, of techniques that you can apply, you know. Um, the, the Gibraltar hardware and Tama and DW drums. Drop clutches are commercially available from DW drums Gibraltar hardware and Tama. Okay, uh, modern stands. The standard hi hat features two cymbals mounted, <laughs> you know, to a stand consisting of a matting metal tube and a rod supported by the tripod, as you well know. So, that's some things that you pretty well are aware of. You know, the bottom cymbal sits dropped atop the, of the tube typically perpendicular to the ground but is often fitted with a, an adjustment screw allowing it to sit slightly tilted so you get a whole different type of in fact that's how I do it a period I use it myself that way because I, I love the, the sound that I created you know um, and of course that helps it changes the whole foot pressure that you're applying on your uh, with in your style uh, upon and on the uh, and with your techniques on the actual pedal you know an integrated clutch assembly includes a spring which may be adjusted to set a resistance which also varies the rate of tension and return as well as the adjustment for the gap between symbols when open you know and yeah, I know you're somewhat aware of all this it's just the way um, they're expressing explaining this is um, gets you thinking you know on a, maybe a different level of where you're going with your own uh, practicing regimen you know because you have to put time there um, again you you without putting the actual Largo tempo a long time you know a lot of years uh, you know I mean it takes a lot of experience to gain wisdom you know that's that's really the real bottom line and of course the more types of music you play you know whether you it's only going to enhance your greater overall awareness to everything that's going on within creating beautiful music, you know. Um, open and close hi-hat refers to notes struck while two cymbals are apart or together. Open and close. While the pedal hi-hat refers parts or notes played solely with pedal used to strike the two symbols. Most symbol patterns consist of two open and closed notes. Some high hats allow the tripod to be tilted. Ah, we already got into that. Uh, you know, clutch. Now, the clutch is the, the apparatus that, yeah, of course, uh, it holds uh, the standard clutch use, uses a kernel, you know, 
it's it's a uh, you know it's kind of it has a, a grip to it you know collar and the word uh, they spell it K N U R L E D collar Curlo. you know I don't know these pronunciations I I have to admit I never really um, got that in depth with this having that word so uh, you you check it out yourself and however you want to pronounce it it's it's all good to me the collar is tightened against the end of the thread while the rings are tightened against each other it's quite a, a you know the clutch is you really want an amazingly I'll tell you this much you know whether you pronounce the word I just call it a clutch that's that's uh, how I was brought up and you know we, we can get microscopic with that but one for sure fact is that clutch has got to be an amazing phenomenal clutch I use Thomas and sonar okay sonar to me uh, makes some of the most phenomenal clutches but now they have a different structure how they uh, of the rod they only fit a certain uh, diameter of the rod now the Tama is very interchangeable with many many types of stands you have Yamaha stands you have you know you have Ludwig stands you have yeah well old Slingerland stands uh, you name it you know I use I actually have Mapex uh, I have a Mapex I have a Tama's but I've been using Tama ha sock hi-hats for the beginning uh, so many damn years I started with a Ludwig though and I used to use uh, the Ludwig Speed King you know but it was a hi-hat you know and I also used the original Ludwig Speed King foot pedal because uh, you know when I was influenced I you know by uh, Buddy Rich and some of those, uh, those those cats that were mentioned previously in this uh, video in the article that I'm reading here but you know I think you're getting the idea of it um, um, I think you're gonna take this to the next level that's a fact and I really um, enjoy uh, sharing this knowledge I have a lot more uh, to, to actually express within all this um, you know because you know sometimes you have to take it and be creative and be just you you know because it's really all about that you could you know you did this you did that and you study the bottom line is you're gonna put time there and, and get better greater awareness of your own very passionate passion within creating beautiful music so we can actually get out there and meeting you, I, and spread the word through our music and sharing, you know, this um, knowledge that I presented to you today. Again, please subscribe and um, like the video. It helps the analytics, as you well know, or maybe not, I don't know. Uh, I'm not here to sell any beachfront property in the middle of the Sahara Desert, you know. I don't, I don't, I'm a very creative, uh, starving artist. <laughs> but, you know, let's be real, um, you know, it's hard to make a living uh, in the arts, you know. I'm a Renaissance artist myself, so. Yeah, but I, I've done pretty good um, as far as I never made, um, you know, I'm one of these unseen wizards out there upon uh, creating amazing drumming um, beauty, you know. I love uh, to express and get people to dance and just have a fantastic time and stay focused. Because when you are up there on the stage, you have not any time to go the other dimension and then more of the well I am screwed up man I need a bear out there god damn it and uh some cliff every day you know you gotta learn through the, uh, the school of hard knocks is uh, it's better be just straight minded because that's what you are at the best of 
get into your meditations through uh, becoming more aware of your pineal gland and remember this is one phenomenal journey all the way I have a, again a lot more to say so at this point I will farewell, say farewell until our next communication and please subscribe and um, join this channel and definitely we communicate through comments I really express this very strongly please comment give me ideas who you are so we can get better acquainted and become with greater strength remember there's no problems only amazing phenomenal solutions so God be with you have a it's you know it's a holiday season so please drive safe out there that's very important okay and I do uh, really love uh, everything that you know I have a great amount of very deep love for for all living all life within this greatness you know from the infiniteness of the cosmos all the way to the infiniteness of the innerness of you okay so take care again please subscribe comment and for sure like the video and drive safe out there till next time god be with you bye